Hey guys, here's a quick intro on how to use HueForge. So I have this picture of my niece that I want to 3D print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the extracted folder that you downloaded from the email that you get after purchasing HueForge. Go into the HueForge folder and open hueforge.exe. And we can close this out. And now all we have to do is we have to get a picture. So I'm going to grab this picture and just drag it over into HueForge. And then this picture does have a background, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this website, erase.bg. We can upload the picture, and it only takes a second to remove the background, and then you can download it at full resolution. So just give it a second. We can download it. And then we can drag that into HueForge. And so you can tell that it has a transparent background because it has the checkerboard in the background. So here we have this picture and it's in black and white currently, which is nice and all, but I want it to be in color. So I'm going to look at all these filaments that we have here. I'm using all the polylight filaments, so they're already in this library. When you download HueForge, you don't have to do any filament testing if you're using polylight. But I'm just going to start, I like doing the darkest color first. So I'm going to start with black and all you have to do is drag it over and onto the slider. And then next up I'm going to do a purple. So poly light purple, you can just drag it over to the slider. And then let's do a blue. Drag that over. Let's see. We'll do a medium blue. I also want to go past the four colors. So I'm going to add another slider and add not polymaker teal, I want aqua blue. And then I want my white PLA plus. And now all we have to do is mess with the sliders. So basically all the slider means is how high up in the print is that color going to be. So if I move the camera over in this direction, you can see the purple is at this low point. If I raise up the purple slider, it's going to increase the height that the purple is at. And it's going to do the same thing for each one. So now if I want the dark blue higher than the purple, I'm just going to raise the slider up above the purple. And so now the dark blue is physically above the purple, as you can see from the actual depth of this model, the dark blue is on top of the purple. And so basically it just does one layer at a time with a different color each time and that's how it produces the 3D and colored effect. So I'm just going to mess with these sliders and see how it looks. All right, so that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is do all the sizing and everything in this model geometry section. So I'm going to change the detail size from 0.3 to 0.2. This makes the file size a lot bigger, but it also makes the detail a lot better. I'm also going to change the size because my printer can't do 300 height, so I'm just going to make it about 150 high, and it automatically scales to 100 width for the 150 high. And then, I believe that's all we have to do. There's also this brightness adjustment slider. I'm not going to mess with it right now because it looks good, but you can actually slide this and it changes the brightness of the entire picture, which really changes how it looks. So if I show you this, you can see you can make it pop like with all the highlights and stuff. That actually looks pretty good, but I want to get more of the colors in there. So I'm just going to set it back to zero or as close to zero as I can. And now that you have this model all done and ready, it's ready to be sliced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. So save project and I'm going to name it Joe, that's my niece's name. And then we're going to go in the same file menu, we're going to go to export STL, and I'm just going to drop that in my downloads folder. And now we can go ahead and move into Bamboo Studio. So now that we have a new project in Bamboo Studio, we can go ahead and add our 3D model. 
And now you can see it looks real wonky. It's got that background with it too. And that's pretty weird, but it's not gonna print with the background. So let me show you how we're going to slice this. Now we're going to do a custom profile. I already have it set up, but the only things you really need to change are going to be the infill density. So this is going to change to 100 and you're going to change the infill pattern to rectilinear. And then under quality, you're also going to set the first layer height to 0 0.16 and the layer height of 0 0.08. If you want to use something different, you can just set those in HueForge up here in this top bar. So you can see I had the layer height set to 0 0.08 and the base layer set to 0 0.16. I also set the seam position to nearest instead of aligned. It just speeds up the print time a little bit and cleans up some of the strings. So now I'm going to make this the base color so the very bottom color I selected was black, so I'm going to make it black and slice the plate. And while that's slicing, we have this little button here called describe. If it's not showing up, you can use this a little slider to just make this menu bigger. Click describe and it shows you everywhere you need to change the layer heights. So I'm going to put this down on the bottom. All right. So now all we have to do is we have to add each one of these color changes. Now. I have two AMSs, so I'm going to be doing six colors, but you can do as many colors as you like, or you can just stick with four. Honestly, I've had a really good results with just four colors, so it's definitely worth a try, even if you don't have multiple AMSs. And this also works if you don't have an AMS at all, just so you know. But let's see. So the first layer is going to be 0 0.48 millimeters, and that's when it's going to do the first switch. So I'm going to slide this little plus sign up to 0 0.48. I'm going to right click, change filament, and the next filament color is purple, so I'm going to set it to purple. And now we have to slice the plate again, and we're going to move it up to the next layer height. So this is going to be 0 0.72, so I'm going to move this up to 0 0.72, right click, change filament, and we're going to be doing, it looks like this dark blue. Slice the plate again, and we're just going to keep going. So the next one is going to be 0 0.96 millimeters. And we're going to be changing it to medium blue. Slice it again. Next one is 1 1.6. And that's going to be aqua blue. And we're going to slice the plate again. And now finally at 1.92 millimeters, we're going to switch it to white. And it's not going to look anything like it looks in the Hue Forge in the slicer. Here it is. It looks pretty weird, especially with all the seams. So if you go back into Hue Forge, you can see we have a lot more colors. They're less like well-defined. It looks like a gradient, whereas in Bamboo Studio, it's just these solid color changes. But in real life, the filament has a little bit of translucency. Because it's such a thin layer at 0 0.08 millimeters, that filament is actually really translucent and you can actually measure it with the filoscope. So that's where all those numbers come from. That's the transmission distance of the filament. You don't actually have to worry about it though if you're using polylight filament. But that's why, so this white isn't going to just look like solid white on the actual print. It's going to be a little bit transparent, just like you see in Hue Forge, where it kind of looks like a gradient. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get this printed out. And here is the final print, you guys. She is so adorable, and I love how the print turned out. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to respond to them. And let me know if you want a video on how to figure out the transmission distances, because I still have to figure that out. But have a great day, you guys. Happy printing.